Hi friends, in our time together today, I'm going to introduce that great old hymn, Amazing Grace. Uh, some folks have asked to learn it and I've wanted to introduce it as well. It's a very beautiful tune to play. It's fairly simple to learn, but you can also do a lot with it from an expression and ornamentation standpoint. We'll follow our usual format. I'll stand so you can see my hands as I play through the tune. We'll talk about any difficulties you might experience, some ideas for ornamentation and expression, and I'll share um, a bit on the history of the tune. It's kind of rough with this one to consolidate the history of the tune because this one we actually know a great deal. Uh, but I'll just I'll squish a bunch together and, uh, and throw that in. I'll include a link in the notes to this video so that you could download the music and tabs if you would like to use those. And um, anyway, I transcribed the tune according to the way most tune books and hymn books have. However, when people play and sing this song, they, they play it just a little differently than written. And so I, uh, I actually transcribed it in the way most people tend uh, to sing and play the tune. There's a beautiful version uh, that Chris Tomlin did that um, I won't play because it's, uh, it's under copyright and uh, Amazing Grace uh, traditional tune um, is uh, in the public domain. Well, the Chris Tomlin version actually just sticks a tag on the end that's really pretty. Look it up. Um, so anyway, here is the tune. Uh, it starts on a D, on our D whistles. <laughs> That's, that's the tune. You're going to get a chance to really work on that low D <laughs> on, on your whistle. So, um, so that, that's really good. And I love the, the tone of listening to that second octave D as you're holding it. It's just really, re really pretty. It's a great tune to play. Um, there are no real great challenges in the tune, uh, though... Um, you're going to have to work on the timing some and the, uh, the change I made was in that op opening sequence, it's repeated three times. That's the way I did it. That, uh, that step down, um, a lot of tunes have it and that's great, but most people, uh, walk that down in a triplet style. So those three notes get one, one beat. Um, again, it's a great tune for beginners to use, but it's also a good tune for more experienced players to just use to experiment with some of the ways they might want to ornament and express the tune. Um, so I would use, you know, some, uh, some slower ornaments. You could vibrato it. Yeah, I'd use some transitional, um, ornaments on those step downs you could uh, uh, you could throw some cut and taps in um, as you're playing the low D uh, you might want to use uh, I don't know, just long clear or you might want to throw a roll on on that um, whatever you might want to do I actually also from a, an expression standpoint um, like when I'm playing it to um, increase 
the volume on that held second octave D and actually then step up to the E and the F sharp before I step back down to the B. Uh, starting in the middle of that first line. Or you could even ornament your way up there. Build so beautifully. It's a great build. So, uh, so try that. So you're at the D, your second octave D, you're building, step into the E, build a little more, step into the F sharp, build a little bit more. It's, it's, it's a good bit of fun. So a gentleman named John Newton uh, wrote the hymn and he actually wrote the verses as well. And um, this is like middle of the 18th century. So it's pretty amazing that we have uh, his work intact from from that that time and the the words the lyrics of this hymn actually tell the story of his reflection on his own life and the way God has has um, been kind to him through the years so briefly uh, John Newton was born in 1725 his mother uh, from, by all accounts, was delightful, kind Christian woman. His father was a sailor with less than desirable attitudes and lifestyle. How did those two get together? <laughs> anyway, John's mother died when he was six. Uh, a couple other years later, he ended up in a boarding school. And at age 11, he went to sea with his father. I, I'm guessing you can imagine um, how quickly his, uh, his story goes downhill from here. John apparently was so much trouble that even the sailors didn't want to deal with him. So nine years later, at 20 years old, he was dumped on an island near Sierra Leone where he ended up living as a servant um, for just over a year until another ship, trader ship, came and, and the captain of the ship knew John's dad and took John on. Uh, and so he um, joined, joined that, the, that boat, but this was a slave trading ship. And that's where John ended up getting into the slave trade. Um, he ended up making his living in the slave trade for a number of years, sailing and as a broker. Just You can read more about it. You could look it up, but trust me, it's not pretty. Um, anyway, he was in, in a boat um, as his career progressed, and he found this book, uh, a book by Thomas Akempis, that really deeply impacted him. On the same trip, there was a horrifying storm that also deeply impacted him. And they landed in Ireland. Um, and he went to the first church to pray. And I'd love to say that he completely changed his life from that moment. But it was still a long and winding and not so pretty road for him, him ahead. Fast forward many years. At this point, John is a Christian. He's not only a Christian, he's a minister in the Church of England, and he's completely changed his life. And when he preaches um, sermons, he writes a hymn for each sermon. And so in one of his sermons, he was talking about all the ways God works in somebody's life. And he used his own life as the example and the hymn he wrote for that Sunday was Amazing Grace, which is uh, his description of how God works in someone's life. Even someone as horrible as he was from, uh, you know, as his story goes. Um, and beautifully, I think, later he, uh, at this point in his life, actually, when he wrote this hymn, he was openly opposed and spoke widely against the slave trade. So anyway, great read. Uh, look him up. It's, it's kind of fun. Um, 
the the hymn and the, the verses, I'll include the verses in the notes to the video, are a reflection of his deep and dark journey from uh, tragedy to to faith and um, and a new life. It's, it's 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 really really beautiful. Anyway, check it out. Um, enjoy playing this tune, friends. It's a great tune to learn. It's an even better tune to to emote. And uh, I think I'll play it through uh, in a day or two. Until next time, this is Scott Shade. Happy whistling, my friends. <laughs>